All right, instead of saying welcome back to the shop, welcome out to the field. Um, I'm about to pull a wheel off of a John Deere 40 ton. Uh, I'll get the model number in a second what it is. Um, so I lost the wheel bearing on it. I can come in here, you can see. see if my, I'm using my cell phone, I didn't bring my camera today. And you can see here with the hub, um, you know, this gap in here where it's been rubbing on the axle tube. Uh, I looked online and I could not find very, I couldn't find any videos on this. Couldn't find any information at all. I could find the parts and that was about it. So I'm gonna do a quick video on taking this off. I'll film some more when I you know, get inside, see what's inside there. And then when I go back together, when I get the bearings and whatever else I need. So hopefully it didn't get so bad it needs machining. I did look it up and it's kind of strange. You know, the brakes are inside of the differential. Um, instead of them being at the wheel like they are on any other vehicle I've worked on. So I have a few questions about it. I'm not sure how this is gonna come apart. I'm gonna go ahead and drain the oil first. But all I have is a ring of bolts right here. I'm gonna pull all those out. And I, hopefully that's just the wheel. But if it is, I don't know what's retaining the, the planetary or the final drive. So let's get the oil out. I'm actually gonna pull this plate off to see what we have in there. And then after that, I'm just gonna put my crane on the wheel. Yeah, I'm gonna pull these bolts out and see what we get. Hopefully the wheel's separate from the hub. Otherwise, it's just gonna make it a little harder to put it back together when I have to you know, put it in with the new bearings and shim it and stuff like that. So anyways, uh, stay tuned. All right, you can see the oil coming out. It's got lots of steel in it. And as soon as that's done draining, we'll be able to pull the wheel off. All right, so I used the 16 millimeter socket to pull these bolts out, slid this off. There was a, so there's a uh, needle bearing inside there. You can see the gears. And then there was a thrust washer on top of here, or probably the race for this bearing. Okay, so I took the wheel off. And you see here, there's three Allen bolts. Once I remove those three Allen bolts, I can pull the, uh, the planetary out, the final drive out, and then we'll be able to we'll see what's inside. We'll press the hub off. All right, so I pulled those Allen bolts out. Uh, they take an H10 Allen socket to get out. Yeah, and the bolts that pull the wheel loose are 30 millimeter. Just to help you guys out in the future. So I've got a link bracket hooked up on here. I'm just gonna get some tension with the crane and slide it off. Just have to slide it off out of there. Hopefully, it doesn't catch that uh, axle and hang up a little bit. So it's got this adapter shaft. And there's the axle itself. I'll pull that out in a minute. I'll inspect this planetary real quick, see if it got any damage. Yeah, it looks like all the gears are gonna be shot. A lot of steel went through here. We'll have to look and see if we can find new, some used ones or else we're gonna be buying some new parts for this one. And same with the bolt gear inside, the ring gear, it's chewed up really bad. All right, so I've got my uh, link bracket. Bolt it back up on here. I found a shoulder bolt in my truck. Um, got that on there. It's on the crane. And then I just have to pull out these uh, these bolts here. They take an 18 millimeter socket. I'm gonna go ahead and pull those out, and I'll be able to slide out this uh, bull gear. And then uh, and the hub should slide right off of the bearings. Okay, so I pulled these bolts out, and um, you know as, as you know I expected, there's a shim pack behind there. Uh, they had Loctite on like three or four of the bolts. Not all of them, just a few of them. I also, uh, when I had the camera set down, I slid the axle out, set it on the tire, just to get it out of the way. And I noticed that there's a bushing in here, a brass, you know, like a brass or bronze bushing, whatever. Um, that looks like we're gonna be changing that too. We got a little bit of damage. So then we'll go ahead and slide this off and see what we get. All right, so I just left the bull gear in there because it was kind of tight, had a lot of tension on it. So I just used the crane and just slid the whole hub off with the bolt gear in it. And you can see the seal. Here's remnants of the, uh, probably a dual cone seal. Uh, 
Uh, here's all this stuff inside. Here's the bearing cage. It's all wadded up. Yeah, it was a dual coat seal. It's it's just trash. All these parts in here, just bearings are just gone, gone. Just the inner bearing. Looks like the outer bearing might still be intact. Probably what that's from is, uh, you know, we hauled rock out of here, like full loads of uh, real, you know, good sized rock and uh, mixed with dirt. And there's a tailgate on here to prevent uh, spillage on the haul road. But most more than likely, it's probably being overloaded. Um, and it's a long haul too. It's about just over a mile each way. So that wrecks havoc on these wheel bearings when you try to overload these trucks. Ooh, this is bad. I just realized this. That dual cone seal mounts in here. This is the mount for the dual cone. And uh, yeah, that's tall, that's wiped out. So it's the mount seal, the seal area in here for the dual cone. So this hub is probably gonna be trash or unless it's rebuildable, you can uh, mach weld it up, machine it out. The hub itself, I don't know what to do on that. I'm gonna find out with the owner. Uh, that's that's kind of sucks about these on these John Deere's. You know, this Caterpillar, that would be a changeable part. But that is part of this whole axle tube. It looks like we're gonna have to pull, unbolt the suspension pads, unbolt the tube from the differential housing and take that whole uh, axle tube off and change it out. Because I doubt we're gonna be able to get someone to machine that in the field. All right, I'm back on this uh, John Deere 40 ton rock truck, particularly truck, um, about two weeks later. It took me a little while to find the used parts, but uh, so this whole axle assembly from here on out, I just was able to locate the whole assembly because uh, you know the hub was ruined, the end of the axle uh, spindle was ruined, the planetary and bull gear that was all bad. So I was able to just locate the whole unit about 10,000 bucks. So now, what I have to do to get it off um, first off, I started you know, I drained the differential, um, I bolted the suspension pad here, and then to get this pad up. What I did is I put my porter power in here and I pushed up on the walking beam. <coughs> I come back to the back here. I cut out a piece of one inch plate, um, you know, a piece of plate here. And I, I uh, beat that in there with my 12 pounder just to hold that in place. That'll hold the walking beam up like this. That'll hit, hold the beam up and out of my way. And then now I just have to unbolt the pan hard rod, unbolt whatever they call this rod. And then I'll be able to get my crane on it. And uh, actually, I'm going to move move my jack over to here, put the jack under the center of the diff, and then I'll be able to get this this stand out of here. And I'll get the pan hard rod off and that other rod off, and then I can undo the tubes, get this bracket out of the way, undo all those bolts, and then swing this thing out. Um, I'll see if I can video that when I'm doing it. Uh, hopefully, I won't have my hands too full. All right. So what I did to get this off, so I bolted the pan hard rod, I bolted this other pan hard rod, whatever they want to call it. Um, I got my long strap and put it over the frame. So I had one end on this side and one end on this side. And then I was able to just, you know, put one on this end of the axle. The other end was on this end of the axle. And I was able to pry it off. It has a couple of dowels. So when you get the bolts off, you, you get to pry it out to get it off. And then I was able to just lower it down. And then I set it down on this stand because my strap was a little too short. And I just put a link bracket on here where one of the, you know, where the suspension pad, one of the suspension pad bolts went. And now I've just got a link bracket on it. So now I just have to pick it out of there and clean up this stuff and the brakes. This is the brakes right here. Really strange how they do this. The brakes are run right here off the differential. You can see how the drive shaft runs into the spline on the brake discs, on the steel plates. These are the plates of the discs, I'm not sure. Oh, uh, the, the, the discs. And then the piston is over here on the axle tube. This is the piston for the brakes. So you can't see it, but um, underneath are the ports where the brake lines, well, the, the brake bleeder and where the brake line goes to actuate the brakes. So it's actually just sitting upside down right now. And here's where it splines into the brakes. And that's where it splines into the diff. So I'm gonna have to pull the axle out. Uh, most likely. I might be able to feed it in. I'm going to try feeding it in with the axle in first. If I can, that'll be great. And as far as sealant goes, there's no O-ring or anything, but it's just got, use like a flexible um, gasket maker. I just bought a tube of it. This is the kind of cat cells. Um, Loctite high flex gasket maker. You just put a decent amount of this all the way around and bolt it together.
All right, so after getting the axle housing in place, that wasn't too hard, uh, but then the hard part was just getting a shaft lined up um, with the, through the brakes and through the, uh, into the spline on the differential. Um, it's a real pain in the butt because I've got this coupler. The end of the shaft has male spline, then you have this coupler, and then you have a male spline on the sun gear. And it's a real pain in the butt to get that through because you don't get a lot of, it's not much room between here, so you can't really pitch it up very high. So I ended up doing it. Um, I tried putting bars in the end, and it helped me a little bit. But ultimately, I, just with this end, I was able to put... Fortunately, I have an extra axle because we bought a housing assembly and it had the axle in it. I was able to put the axle in and, and push down on the bottom end. And I was still fighting it and fighting it. So I finally had to just put a jack on the other side, get the other wheel up in the air, and rotate it around. And I was able to get it in. So just so you know, when you're putting this in, it felt like it was in. And I was able to turn the axle, but this was sticking out about an inch. This does need to be beyond flush here. It's recessed in a little ways. Um, it to be in correctly. And then it'll give you room to put the planetary in. So after that, all I have to do is just bolt this stuff back on, the pan hard rods. Uh, I need to put the spring cushion back in there and the planetary on and then fill it up with oil and I'll be done. So here's a quick tip for lining this up. If you happen to have an extra suck here, put that in the gears. Put them in part way and hold the gear so they're all indexed the same. And we're going to slide it in. It's going to be matched up already. I'm going to sit on your fingers and try to rotate these gears around. Get it close. And once you get a slide on the other side of there, this will pop out. Rotate the planetary housing as you need to get the bolts in. So I've got it all together. I just need oil and a tire put on it. We're going to have a tire truck come out and put the tire on or put the wheel on. Uh, I made a wheel hook for the cat trucks. But these John Deere ones are really weird, and I really don't want to sling it with a chain to put it on. So I'll grab a tire truck, or get a tire truck out here that's got a hand on it, and he can just pick it up and stick it on. And we do have to tap out a few holes here. All the ones that don't have bolts in them are pretty crusty. I think this thing sat on the ground for a little while in some snow or something. But uh, just got to tap those out, it'll be ready for the wheel. And then uh, the guys that own the truck, they'll put the oil in it and uh, get it all ready to go. So anyways, thanks for watching, and I hope this helps. And uh, please hit subscribe and hit the like button. Thank you.